Hello everyone, we're going to be going through many different posts on the R. Kurosanji subreddit. A lot of these are going to be drama posts and opinions and allegations and such. Unless there is other proof, take it as an opinion piece and take it as allegations. And I will have as many sources as possible. But if no sources are there, then that means it's just an allegation, a shiitake post, whatever you want to call it. It is to be taken as an opinion. Thank you. Here we are. Once again, with Nidhi Sanji, making another big L, another big L, this time with Mika Melatika, or Michi Mochi V, as she's called now. Uh, she did it on a stream where she mentioned all these things that happened. TLDW is basically Nidhi Sanji offered to pay her taxes 10% taken out of her monthly pay every single time since her pay goes up and down. They take 10% to pay for the taxes. At least that's what she was believing. She goes two years with the management, glad with the arrangement, glad that she's not paying out of her taxes out of her own wallet. So the government that was local to her in Indonesia sent her a notice saying she had not paid her taxes for two years. She contacted Niji about this. They replied that they weren't paying her taxes. They were paying their taxes, but with her money. So that seems illegal to me. As a result, she had liquidated a lot of things, including her insurance, leaving her at one point with just $300 in her pocket just so she could pay her debt. She was so poor, in fact, that for six months, she avoided getting her doctor because uh, when she got sick, didn't even go to therapy because in her own words, they cannot afford to get sick. A lot of people in the U.S., can agree with that as well. Let's see what she actually had to say. See, the government has a record that I have always like been a law-abiding citizen, right? I always pay my taxes. I always do my reports. Everything's good yes. and dandy. So she's a she's a Until, she's a good law-abiding citizen. Um, I worked in a different job. And There's Niji Sanji, by the way. I don't know if it's very common all over the world, but for Indonesia, there is an option where your company files your taxes for you and they pay your taxes for you. Yes. So that is a very very common practice, right? It's withholding. Um, the regular withholding when you're W two. Is let's say they give you a fixed amount, like okay, every month I will give you five uh, five hundred USD, right? Every month I'll give you five hundred USD, uh, but I will take ten percent out of that. To pay for your taxes. Yeah, that'd be the hard part. Yeah, but you still have to report it. You still have to report your taxes and everything, but you don't have to pay it outside of your own card. Like the employer exactly. kind of sorts it out exactly. for you, and that's good and dandy. Like that is a choice, right? I don't know if it's common. Is it common chat? Do you guys have that? Like for those of you that are not in Indo, do you have that? Yeah, we do. Mm. They did offer to just take a certain percentage, right? They say they'll take a certain percentage to pay for the taxes. They did charge you, by the way. Big saver for me because all for so long I've only ever needed to like copy paste my income and then my expenses and stuff like that, and it's like easy, you know? Yeah, that's just very little. So this is where they right? offered to very, pay your taxes. I was very grateful that they offered to basically pay the taxes for me like that was still an option because that way I don't have Taking to Taking 10% much. out of her, um, yeah, her money. Like, like, I would rather overpay tax than underpay tax. That's the kind of person I am. I would much rather give the government more money because first of all, paying taxes is a good thing. I know people are like, yeah, 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 taxes, but that's how your country works and you want to support it and I want to support it. So I would much rather overpay a little bit, right? So we had a whole system set up and basically for like two years, I never spent any money out of my own wallet to pay the tax. I did send a, like, I did file them, but I never really spent money because every month they took 10% anyways for my taxes, right? And like, that's what we discussed. And it was written. That's what she, that it's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was written down. Money. So she could win in a, lo in a lawsuit. It's not like, oh, it's just could. a verbal thing. You don't know what they did. They did. It, that is written proof that they did. So I never really spent any money out of my own wallet because it's already deducted, right? And then TLDR, two years later, um, I got sent a letter from my local government that I have actually been avoiding taxes. And they were like, onto my ass. They were like, hey, by the way, you haven't paid your taxes in two years. And according to your report, you have earned a significant amount compared to your last paid taxes. And you are late by like two years. So we will have to add interest fees. And that's when I started shitting that's myself That's BS, a little bit. of course. And I was like, what do you mean I haven't paid? I have paid. And what? And in the paper, it said, if you, are, if you do not sort your shit in a week, we will have to bring you to court. And I, as you can tell, I am insanely paranoid. Like, I'm very, very paranoid about going to jail. I'm very paranoid of money. She so has anxiety and other things. So that she's going to be myself. paranoid. Like, I had such a mental mind break, dude. I freaked out so hard. But at that time, I was like, oh, it's probably a misunderstanding, right? Like, maybe it's a misunderstanding. So I contacted, um, like, one of my friend's dad is a lawyer. So I asked him for advice. I was so, like, hey, yeah. what should I do? I, I'm pretty sure it's a misunderstanding. Basically being like, okay, send us proof of like, uh, when you file taxes, you get like a code, right? Like it's a code that says that you did file it. And it's not just like, oh, I said I did. Like there is a code when you transfer money. So they're like, okay, send us like all the transfer, like proof, like a code of proof that you actually did transfer the money. Exactly. So I was like, okay, I can just ask my employer, right? Like, you sound in this case. I was like, hey, I need all of this. Like it's a whole list. It's a lot. It's a lot because it's been two years, like two years backlog. I was like, okay, I need this, 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 this. Here's the, like, I even included all the files attached. I was like, here's all the files I'm referring to. This is this. Like I think there was like genuinely like 28 files that I had to make like by myself. Damn. And I, sent it to them, and I was like, hey, this is the thing. Like I just, I just, you know, I just need like the funny little numbers, right? And all my problems will go away. And that's when I found out. I did not know this. I was not aware of this. To be fair, no one really made it, made me aware of this either. But I don't know. If it's, I, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm it's not, not legal. Uh, if anything, I did this myself what they're gonna do right now. Not legal. Those are not my taxes. Those are their taxes. I thought the I still don't get it fully, so I'm not gonna go. Into, I'm not gonna go deep into it. I didn't get it. Like I that's not legal. It, it's not in the like, U.S. Wait, if that's the case, then why are you taking it from my cut? Exactly. So I was like, I don't know. I don't get it. You take it that that in general, from what I understand, legally, uh, the company can only take it from their income, from their profits, from their full gross income, and then they pay their taxes. They pay your taxes from your income. I asked them. They didn't really respond. I was like, okay, whatever. I didn't have time to stress, right? Because like now I know that I actually have been accidentally avoiding taxes, but as an accident, like pure, it was a misunderstanding, I guess, from my part. And the issue is because I didn't pay for two years, so that's like an accumulative sum of two years. Yeah. And I also was late by a year and two, or one to two years. I had interest fees. The Those things I are owed double was more than what I had in my savings account and what I had in my normal account combined. Like I actually did not physically have that much money. Like I couldn't pay 
not because I didn't want to. I did not have that money anymore, right? It's been years, and there's interest fees. Yeah. Interest fees monthly. So I was like, shit, I'm fucked. Like, I didn't have any cash. I literally do not have cash. So I shat myself a little. I have never once even made that much money, I feel like. So I, I told people, I was like, hey, can you help me, like, you know, hook me up with an accountant, maybe? Or, like, a, an actual lawyer, lawyer? Like, a lawyer and an accountant, I need help because I, I've never been in this situation before. Like, I've always been so good at preventing it that now that I have to, like, fix it, I don't know what to do. So I was like, I need help to, you know, do you have any contacts, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, no. <laughs> they're like, no, sorry. Like, good luck, though. So, situation. And I was like, listen, I don't care if I have to, like, spend money over time. I just don't want to go to jail. Like, I'm so scared of going to jail. And during this time, now I can talk about it, like, super lightheartedly. But at that time, chat, I felt so stressed because I didn't have anyone. Like, I didn't have anyone to help me aside from, like, I was literally living from the kind graces of my friend's dad. And it's not like I was best yeah. friends with this person. It's just, like, my friend's dad. A person that I used to know dad. Like, that kind of person. So I was so scared. And it was a really hard time because, like, it feels like all my paranoia was justified. Like, I was like, I knew it. I was so paranoid. I was so careful just for me to fuck up anyways. And it's like, I shat myself, right? It was not her it was fault, though. But then we talked about, we had a meeting, everything was good. And they're like, okay, let's discuss it. We'll, just, we'll you know, describe our situation and maybe we can get leniency. Thankfully, we did get some leniency. So the government did accept the fact that, like, okay, maybe this was a misunderstanding on my part. Like, I've never, the fact that, like, my record was clean, I guess, helped a lot in this situation because they're like, okay, we did research on, like, your past and your history. You've never really had any problems with the law and you've always, like, filed your taxes properly. So we believe that this is a misunderstanding. However, good. we still do owe the money. Lucky. So the, the most they could do is they removed all interest fees. So I didn't have Which to pay is a lot. The overwhelming interest fee. And when I tell you the interest fee was insane, it was 150% more than what I owe them. Like, if I owe them 50 bucks, I have to pay 150 bucks. Yeah. 100 bucks was like genuinely just interest. Like, it was so bad because yeah. I've been, you know, I haven't paid for like two years. So I guess that's why, like, it accumulated so much. So that was already a massive relief, but it was still a high number, right? I don't know how much percent, but it was huge. Like, the moment they're like, okay, we're not going to charge you for the interest fee. Because still really hot. That you didn't mean any, like, you, you didn't mean any harm. You have good intentions. We will remove your interest. And immediately, like, the number got cut in, in half. Like, genuinely, the number got cut in half. And I was so scared for so long. I think that was the first time I genuinely, like, realized that I was breathing. Because I, this is not me exaggerating, okay? Like, you were, I, I was all alone. No one could have helped me. I didn't know anyone that could help me. The only people that could, I didn't even know who they are. And I didn't know what to do. Like, I was so freaked out. And thankfully, a few. Understandable. Away. Because they're like, we understand. Yeah. But there's still money to pay. And I uh, thankfully, I could still pay it. But the thing is, chat, it was it was so much. For that time, like, I think for six months after that happened, I was so, like, scared. I tried my best not to act scared or anything, but I was so scared because I did not have health insurance. I had to liquefy all my insurance. My life insurance, health insurance. That's the part to, where she had to liquefy everything. And I literally only had, like, $300 left. <laughs> after I liquefied everything, I only had $300 left. And so they didn't charge me for the therapy bills. They only charged me for the meds. You know, he's so nice. Like, he knows me already. So he's like, that's fine. Like, we'll just give you a prescription until you can. His, her, her, um... Her therapist only charged her for the meds, not for the actual therapy, which and is good. As long as you're okay, you know, like, as long as you're fine. Scam train, scam train, yippee, look at the scam train! <laughs> so, yeah, like, at that time, though, I didn't have Mom's anyone. I was so scared, I was just myself. of everything. Like, I was, ooh. Ever since then, I am now very, very, very cautious of everything. So like, she's very cautious. Pain meds, that's kind of it. I don't know if it was an anxiety attack or, like, I don't know, but it was so long. But yeah, good old times, at least you learn, you know. So, yeah, she had anxiety time. attacks where she so couldn't fast. breathe. Because <laughs> like, she I'm mentioned she couldn't breathe. And those I'm a like these. These are, like severe anxiety attacks that she had and of course vishojo treated her well and tried to help her out because gun run is very good as well at that too um but this is something that's not the first time i've heard about it you hear about it with k9 kudo with uh, the tax thing his was a bit different his was primarily just uh bad advice on what taxes to pay basically instead of paying you know, let's say um, for a hundred thousand dollars, maybe you're paying ten thousand dollars. He was paying like five k, so that was the difference. His wasn't so much that he wasn't paying taxes, but the taxes that he was told to pay were uh, a lot less than he actually needed to pay. So he was underpaying. And it says, uh, "How can a company be this evil? Isn't that illegal?" Indonesian taxes are scary as heck. Sure, Niji is relatively correct regarding what they do in Japan, but they know they know very well talents don't have the money uh, to fight them. Like what Sayu said. Uh, regarding the layoff, sure, she could win in theory, but she could be made to suffer and lose all the money that she maybe would have won in legal fees and things like that. So that is where Nidhi Sanji gets you. That's where it gets it. I haven't heard something similar to another Vishojo member. It's like the tax thing is a big thing with, with apparently uh, Nidhi Sanji. I hope that the rest of the Nidhi Sanji people aren't in the same tax serious, you know, serious situation. I hope that they have better uh, representation. And uh, especially after this now, um, Someone's here saying Nidhi Sanji tax should be deducted from Nidhi Sanji income itself. Why deduct it from the talent salary? It's literally crime. Over here in the U.S., it would absolutely be crime. It would be wage theft, I believe. It would be a form of wage theft over here in the U.S. I don't know how it works in Indonesia or it works in Japan, but over here in the U.S., that would be wage theft. So Nidhi Sanji did an illegal thing, did a morally corrupt thing, did an ethically corrupt thing, and gave uh, Mika Meditika a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of issues later on. With the fact that she didn't have health insurance anymore because she couldn't afford it because she's paying off the government all that kind of stuff it's just really bad and i'm glad that she is in a better position now but i'm really sad that she even had to go through it in the first place here we have michi mochi v talking about how vishojo surprised her uh this fairly long clip of michi talking about vishojo and in contrast also her old company worth it to reinforce that so far every talent discussion on this topic has been very enlightening on how the old company must have been 
Uh, Gun Run Secret CEO of another huge company besides IRL Backpack Company. And Vishojo is his passion project. Where did the man even get his money? No, but he's one of the founders of another company and worked until 2018. I'm glad she's in a better place now. Like, holy S, those benefits are insane for a company overall. It's too good to be true type of vibes. Let's see what the benefits are. I see. Yeah, they said, uh, do you have a habit of eating ice? And I'm like, I used to, but not anymore recently. And they're like, yeah, if you have a habit of have any of them, like the usual, like, oh, anxiety, right? But like, I already have anxiety. I already know that. So I don't get yeah. anxiety from streams. I do think maybe therapy would be good, but I don't know if it's right now because I'm pretty busy. Like, I don't have time for therapy. So I was looking through it and okay, the price, the price is pretty up there. You know, like, I don't think it's a bad price, you know? Like, good. This is a service you're selling and this is your value. But I was like, shit, bitch, that's, you're gonna make me need another form of therapy. Like, my therapy would be like, girl, the price. <laughs> Therapy for the price. Well, it's so expensive, price. expensive for me. <laughs> therapy prices are horrid. The thing is, chat, right? Let me tell you, in my country, our therapy prices for us is considered high, but not this high. So the therapy that I saw online was like 120 bucks per session. Per Holy session. crap! You have to get like four because you have to do like that's still expensive. Right. What is 120 times four? Zero eight. 400, 480 bucks a month, right? So that's like basically 500 bucks a month. And the recommended is 20 sessions. What is 120 times 20? Zero zero four two thousand four two thousand four hundred dollars. Which I get, you know, like it's a niche thing. They, you are yeah. you're working with licensed professionals that know specifically how to deal with issues that like streamers have to face and stuff like that. But two thousand four hundred. Oh, no, that's man. a lot so i was like i mean i don't think i am like in dire need for therapy so like, I'm like chat i'm losing it i'm going through it I, i'm never gonna talk about this i'm gonna try to be like subtle about it but i don't really care about referencing other things i'm just gonna be like subtle and funny about it or i'll try to be old habits die hard yeah like old mindsets die hard so i do realize i do have some like subconscious things that goes on in my head that i'm like you know i, I don't need to i don't need to stress about that anymore like i don't have to feel so shit about certain things anymore but it's like this is one thing i'll admit there are sometimes moments where i'm doing something and then i just have like a really bad panic attack because i'm like oh my god wait i shouldn't do it like i can't do it I, what happened chat yes something absolutely insane apparently right does your paypal work it does it does please don't give me any therapy money chat because <laughs> No insane, therapy money, please. Vishojo offers to pay for your therapy. I don't know if you guys know this. I think other, maybe other like talents have talked about this before, but Vishojo offers to pay for your therapy. Oh, like, that's they will nice. Reimburse you for therapy funds. Can we talk about it? Chats, it's insane. I mean, it's just one thing, right? It's one thing, right? I don't know, maybe this is a meme problem, or like maybe this is why I should go to therapy or something. I feel bad. It is insane. Accepting the offer, dude. You don't know how crazy it is, because I remember this. My managers told me, right? It's like, listen, we get it. Like, because before I joined Vishojo, I told them everything, because I'm a very, I'm the type of person that's like, if you're gonna have me on your team, I want you to know exactly what you're going to have, like the good and the bad. Like, I'm not going to be like, I am the perfect person. I am the perfect fit. I, if you that is good. On your team, it's really good. Holy crap. Lie. So I told them everything. I was like, listen, I'll do my best. I would consider myself like I do work hard, but I know I have a lot of issues. Like, so it will take time to kind of like unravel it, you know, like untangle all the issues I got, right? Because when you're told, and this is not just from like, I don't want this to be misconstrued. This is not from like, oh, from the past couple of years. No, like ever since I was born, we were told to fit in a mold. I basically told my managers, I was like, I got a lot of shit, yeah. right? Ever since I was a true, kid, true, I was true, true. To fit into, like, I think that happens with a lot of Asian children. As a daughter, you have to be a certain way. As a woman, yeah, I think so. I think Latino culture myself, they have that. So now that my job is technically to be creative and do whatever the fuck I want to do, that is a very hard thing to break out of. Like, I'm not saying I have an issue being creative. It's just like it's so hard to break out of a mold that. Like, like you have to be different but it's so hard to be different you know what i mean like when you're told all your life that you are not allowed to be to stand out in any shape or form having to be a streamer where your whole point is to like be different or be creative or stand out in your own way it's so difficult that's excluding all my health bills because my health is not the most donkiest so i get like monthly checkups to make sure nothing super uber bad happens so here's my bills like i'll be so transparent with my bills okay i have medical bills every month i have a psychiatrist bill every two months because the meds i take can be like bad so i do need to check up to make sure like oh you're not going insane members we have autoimmune so my mom has autoimmune my aunt has autoimmune my uncle has autoimmune my grandpa so it's like a family genetic thing so right now oh, that she has autoimmune disease. Like, okay. oh man sad sad you know like how did this come to be i kind of already had a feeling we all had a feeling that we're gonna get some shitty genetics anyway so i'm still in the early stage where it's like oh a lot of your shit is weird but we don't know where it's going to go or what's causing it yet so i do need to do like monthly checkups to make sure it's not like bad and it's, oh like, good 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 like, good know, to do money right but that's always bad. good so that's always like, a good ton and adding a therapist on top of it I, I i would say i can't afford it but it's not like it's something that i w i could afford just willy-nilly you know what i mean like i can't just spend that money and be unaffected like i would probably have to like cut off some corners for everything else you know like i'll spend a little less on this spend a little less on that and i'm yeah it's like not something that do i want to like do i really want to like do that like cut cost on food and cut cost on like water bills for therapy so it's something like that i'm not saying i can't afford it i can for sure the thing is like i do have moments where I want to be creative. I want to do stuff. I want to host it. Obviously, I'm not gonna talk about stream. Right? I'm not here gonna. I'm not gonna trauma dump on you guys. But I told you, show like my managers everything I can kind of like think of. Like, oh, I'm gonna be real. I am very aware that these are some things I do, and when this happens, this happens, and it's because of this. Like, I know that. So there's all of that. Like, I have some baggage with me. And I thought at that time, I was like, shit, I'm not gonna join Vishojo because I gave them so much. Like, I know a lot of people come with their own baggage and stuff. But I feel like I came in with a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. I told the staff, and they were so accepting. It's nuts. The girls always talk about Vishojo offering free therapy for its talents. Okay, so I can't talk about it. So basically, I told my managers a lot of shit, right? And I was like, yeah, listen, I have like I wouldn't call it PTSD or anything, but definitely a lot of things freak me out. And it's not even freak me out like, oh my god, ah, like it freaks me out to the point that I can't do anything. Like I'll just lay down and I'm just like so freaked out and I can't do anything. So I'm like, yeah, I do have some shit. And I thought for sure that, that happens I was to me too. Join Vishojo because I was like, yeah, who, who in their right mind would hire someone that's like, that, like, like willingly admitted the fact that they can be dysfunctional, right? So I was like, oh, it's okay. Like I would rather them not hire me than hire me and like get what, like get something that they didn't know, right? Like for the least, like they're really nice people and I don't want to scam them. I'm not talking about how they got hurt. Oh, a specialist,
that's that's what I want to cut it off because you know she's gonna go for more and uh, it's those words are very important but we do have limited time when it comes to these things so uh, she got help she got help from Vishojo Vishojo will compensate you for any fees that you have for therapy that is insane I did not know that a company did that I mean most companies will give you your you know a company health plan where they where they give you you know a little bit of help with maybe 50 percent or you know of the upfront you know monthly cost of your health plan not this this is insane this is utterly crazy i remember henny saying something to the effect i have no idea if he showed you makes money like yeah um dayo but if you think about it investment makes sense if a streamer leaves me shoujo Keep it all the model IP, etc. Vishojo has the incentive for them to stay because it hurts the streamer a lot less to go back to indie. So they invest heavily into giving their streamers what they need to thrive, which is good. And I do think that's really good. In turn, makes them more money and makes it less likely that they'll leave. That's really why they do it. I mean, number one, they're probably just good people. Number two, it makes investment sense when you do this for your talents because you're gonna that breeds loyalty. It's gonna give them loyalty. It's gonna make them very loyal to you. And that is what Mika is. That is what Henya, K9 Kuro, and Matara, they have loyalty to Vishojo because Vishojo is doing a lot for them. Not only on the management end of, you know, giving them stuff for managers, giving them managers that will help them out, but on other things here. You know, it's just, it's interesting to see all of this stuff happen. And I'm glad that it's happening in a positive way. Here we have a little bit more of Nidhi Sanji's sisters coping. Uh, Doki Bird moved on months ago. The first image gives a good explanation of how else Nidhi's sisters and how exactly does one person F over the entire of Nidhi and VTubing. It says, it's really weird how rent-free our Oshi lives in the head of some people despite Doki having no intention of attacking Kursanji. What Reed Dragoons may or may not say does not in any way reflect Doki's stance on the matter. She made it clear she just wants to move on. And Luca, seed you leftover women with Raziel. There's no female organs. The Fujiyomis won and finished takeover as soon as the rest of the women finished graduating. She never did. That's the saddest part of the entire thing. They hate on her because they need a scapegoat. Just look at Anna's behavior. Perfects the fan base in a nutshell. Yeah, they need a scapegoat pretty much. It says here, the, the, the green text. The green text, which is 4chan, is known for green text. Beanie GEN. Soft start to the branch. People are happy to see their graduated tubas debuting, debuting as organs. First two waves are actually solid, albeit with scuff. Etheria comes along and nothing seems out of place at first glance, other than Nina being unable to stop saying the word honey. The calm before the storm. WebM. Oh great, here comes Mani Sanji. Luxim debuts. Skyrockets the branch so meteorically that Riku decides it's time to accelerate to enter more Mani Sanji. Uh, the original fan base of Proto Niji and start to get more and more agitated as VC S takes place everywhere. And then get caught taking talking S about your competition directly. None of your organs actually come forward and admit it, minus a semi-remark from from fungus. I guess vulgar in this case. Uh, this makes them all seem capable, but it mostly blows under the radar in public eye. It's probably fine overall, but then number F begins growing to insane heights again. Niji F are on top of the world. Millie decides it's grand idea to show everyone that VT lives in the heads of the organs. They act as if it never happened. And thus a spiral drama ensues. And here you have, except I can see proof right in front of my eyes, an EN scene as a whole is indeed declining. The, do the, the Doki Bird drama and drama channels being at fault for the most part. So I'm trying to put blame on someone else. The only thing in front of your eyes is uh, Pag Pag, don't make me laugh. Whenever I hear the do's, the, the do thingy, you aren't exactly coming off as someone older than eight in my, any argument. Rather not behave like a child, but at least everyone won't automatically think you're an idiot by dropping baby talk. Yeah, they're doing the baby talk stuff, so. Drama Bird destroyed the entire EN scene. She beat literal 3D debuts with the effing tree that must really sting the ego. Yeah, with the uh, freaking uh, paper and stuff, yes. Just Niji, rest of EN is doing fine. Niji declining, Hollow declining, Grifter Bird declining, Grifter Bird. I don't, I don't like how they call it Grifter Bird. The only winners in this were drama channels. Drama Bird literally killed the EN scene. Stop watching D because she's boring and bad at streaming. Gets used to drama channels instead. I really do like how this with Dookie Tards. Uh, what a great contribution to the VTuber scene. I don't know why it comes as such a shock that Hollow Life would wipe the floor with Niji EN. Hollow Life is cute, charismatic anime girls having fun with other cute, charismatic anime girls, and they mostly say so away. Niji EN is, I'm not sure what they're going for. It's like an unpopular bunch of nepo nepotic indies, nepotistic, I guess, indies, got together and thought that a banner would make people like them. They don't even have the cute girls club thing going for them. Half of Niji ENs don't have personality, and I can't remember the last time any of them cared about the kayfabe. That's the thing. Niji, Niji Sanji doesn't seem to really care about the kayfabe. Uh, Hollow Life does care about the kayfabe. Kayfabe is very important when it comes to a lot of these things. Kayfabe is super important. 
uh, when it comes to VTubing, especially when you're in a large organization. The kayfabe is very important. It is what uh, basically, it's like wrestling in that way with the kayfabe. It's what uh, keeps the fans going. It's what keeps the fans interested. You have a backstory. You have all that kind of stuff. So the fans will be interested in what you are doing. Of course, that's why everyone tries to keep the kayfabe going. And one person pointed out they needed a scapegoat. They cannot fathom that their lord and savior, Oshis, can do no wrong. Everything else that's wrong. Dramaberg destroyed the entire end scene. What a massive cope. The whole S show made people like me who only watch Corpo find new people to watch. Even among the Corpos, Advin has rejuvenated the three gens of Hollow EN. Vishojo is bringing new VTubers, well, new to them. And growing, Idol is doing some interesting things and launching ES Gen with more support than the last Niji EN waves. Uh, Doki killed the EN scene, supposedly. Imagine something like that for, for, uh, for this. Basically, something like this for the Spanish Eternal S, the Idol EN you know, thing. You know, they're, they're, they made a whole freaking uh, trailer for, for that instead of what TTT has. All the sisters' Connor argument is Dookie Bird killed Ian. Uh, as some people have said in the SC, looks like their brain indeed stopped developing at age 8. And here are some numbers here. See how the numbers in the Ian branches change over the past 4 months. According to this, Niji Ian 1347 to 1466 to 1329 to 976. Uh, Hollow Ian 6506. This is the uh, CCV as stats of total views. Streaming hours tend to fluctuate based on events. Stars Ian. The sources here, let's look at the sources better because it's usually better to look at the sources when looking at all these things. Here's their numbers. Um, again, you know, all these numbers here. What do the numbers mean, Mason? It's just basically things changing uh, percentage wise, 15% down, you know, 22% up in some cases, 5% down in other cases, you know, 2% down in other cases, as you're seeing here. Uh, historical team stats locked behind subscription, but you can check the individual talent stats by checking their name and that. You can all look, at the, all look at that stuff. And yeah, basically the stats go down. The stats keep going down. Find funny is that even if they could actually push back, they're completely incompetent at it because they just lash out at every direction. They hate Doki. They hate Mint. They hate former talents now in V Shoujo. They hate indies who collab with them. Drama tubers who report on them. And most of all, they hate Hololive simply for being successful where they failed. In the end, it simply comes off as childish. It really does. The reason why they don't like Hololive is Hololive is actually, like I said, following the kayfabe. They're actually doing things to help their talents. They're doing what they can to make sure that their talents are successful. And that is the way a company should be. But as we know, Nidhi Sanji isn't the best company to compare anybody with because they're going to make anybody look good pretty much. So these seconds, the, these people had their time cut. In the Chinese Cantonese post on Twitter about Virtual Rhapsody, they got their time slash from 30 from 90 to 60 seconds. And it says right here, true feelings about the incident in Singapore being reduced. Although I've tried my best to look away, everyone to know about this. <clears throat> this one goes over how the Sunny meet and greet. Uh, Sunny seemed surprised about the fact that things were cut, the fact that things were uh, not done correctly. They um, had asked staff if they were going to have enough time. They had asked staff if things were going to be enough. And they said they had 10 seconds left. They quickly finished, took pictures. Sunny didn't apologize, but they didn't want random badge for compensation for 30 seconds. Hope officials in Singapore will stop pretending to be gone. Down here, uh, they have a 90 second meet and greet. Bot was cut to 60 seconds since I was meeting Sunny last. First lined up for Uki. Uki, the person who doesn't like white people. For Uki, I have entire 90 seconds. I'm very happy. Then I lined up for Shu. Bottom line, the air conditioning suddenly stopped and is wondering what's going on. He got evicted. Basically, the, the, the place was like, your time is up. You're done. Staff start to give us badges and say that they're compensating for cutting the line, for cutting the 60 second thing. Excuse me, why do they think a badge is enough for compensation? Because you guys staff failed miserably in time management. You want the fans to leave? The affected amount of people is a third to half total. I even heard the worst case, I will need to refund the ticket. Do you know at the moment I was about to have a breakdown? I am likely unable to see Sunny. Some people may say this is extreme, but this is an Oshi thing. This is something that people travel, like especially if these people traveled to Singapore from another nation. They spent a lot of money and a lot of time traveling to Singapore to go see their Oshi. It is a very emotional thing. It is a very important thing. Some of you may laugh, but you know, it, it's it's very important. Like I know there are people laughing. Yes, you can laugh if you want, but it's very important that the, that if you pay for something and you look forward to it for a long time for it to suddenly be canceled can cause a breakdown. It can cause sadness. Uh, I really wanted to cry, but I was next to seeing Shu. Good thing the relatives consoled me and made me calm down. At first, I thought once I meet Shu, I don't have to hurry up. I have two Oshis affected by this. In total, it was cut 60 seconds. And one of them is my Kami Oshi. Especially the Kami Oshi thing. Man, that, that really sucks. Then somebody lined up for Sunny. I was the last one. Is right here. These, these ones right here. That's what it was. Th these ones that they're translating. 
Let's head into the booth and find out the female staff is quite garbage. Perhaps the last show she was responsible for, Finana, no one lined up and thus doesn't need to manage time. When I met Finana, I really have two minutes. So the lineup for Sunny was very slow. The things that sold out were pushed really slow. Because the people ahead of me must have been more than 90 seconds. The staff doesn't know how to stop the timer. Then I called a host to intervene. First know how, how to find the female staff to help out the booth. Genuinely worried there would be a sudden power outage. The kind where the power go outs with a bang. Luckily, I can safely meet Sunny. But when I was really nervous upon meeting him, I was very emotional. Right to the beginning, my voice was choking. Then before I know it, it's over. I really feel helpless and unfair. Had I known this would happen, I would have rushed Sunny first, right? Sigh. I know the hosting company is not a good situation, actually what's going on, but I still was affected. Happy 90 seconds is mixed with anger and disappointment. Enough talk. Thank you for the relatives who consoled me. I, If not because of them, I make up my ruin my night. Time to cry. Thanks to you reading about how I was effed. You guys cared about me. I'll post some happy stuff later. Even with me being as Kurosanji, I still sympathize with the fans. Exactly, still sympathize with them because they're fans. If you're fans of Hololive or any kind of VTuber, you can understand. Meeting them is one of your 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 passions, one of the things you really want to do. Paying all that money for a ticket and waiting in anticipation to see your Oshi, only to be told your time has been cut by two-thirds, is devastating. I don't know how much tickets were, but I hope they at least gave them the amount of badges equivalent to the money time lost. Also, maybe those fans should do a chargeback if they can. No, it's not the Liver's fault, but it's definitely Kurosanji's. The blatant false advertisement at best, intentional in order to get extra money at worst, and scam fans uh, and unsold $5 badges is a consolation prize. I thought that's what happened, but with the AC, you never know. With any color, you never know. So yeah, all these people are mentioning all these bad things, um, you know, all the all the translations and stuff. It's still a very bad situation. Uh, Nidhi Sanji should have done better time management, maybe have a stopwatch, maybe have a clock going off to make sure that you have like a 10 second warning, a 30 second warning, that type of thing. I know it sounds like you're rushing people, but if you want to keep the time exactly fitting, then yes, you have to do these things. Absolutely. Yalira has lost one year's worth of steady growth. She absolutely has. So um, that sucks for her. Absolutely sucks for her. But what can you do when um, the company that you're with is not great? And here we go. We see this growth here, right here. She was having steady growth, steady growth, steady growth to six, 600 from 550 to 600. And since May of 2023, she's back to where she was in 2023. Is it her fault? Well, she did do the black stream video. So she does know that that bad PR would probably follow her. She's not dumb. Well, at least I don't think she's dumb because she got herself into the position that she's in with the you know, favoritism and all that kind of stuff that has been accused, of course. It's, a, it's an accusation. It's been assumed that this is the way that things are going. But because of all that, she um, she has lost that growth. And that is her fault. No one else's but hers. They all know why it's happening. And all of them need to pretend to be completely unaware. The rest of their time will be tough. Hopefully they can get emergency exits as soon as possible. Not that they can do much about it. Just need to wait until they can get out and hopefully scrape something together. And whatever they make is of, off the last streams. The sell on apocalypse, the lack of brand identity and stagnation. The only cure is graduation and spilling the beans on the company and all those involved with receipts. Should have been Vox or Ike, so then collab with those. Two way more than ever collab with Illyria. I'm sure the Black Stream heard a lot more coming from them specifically. I know Ike didn't say much on the Black Stream, but the fact that he agreed that there's all disgusting considering... Yeah, he agreed with a lot of things that were said there, so that's disgusting, of course. Um, 500k celebration soon. Of course, this is all just opinions here, and there are a ton of them. You know, keep boycotting them if you want. Right way to protest against Nidhi Sanji. Don't send actual threats. Don't send actual, you know, negative things like bullying and harassment and that kind of stuff. Don't do that. Just don't do that. Bet every channel statistics have plummeted since the whole thing began. It'll be months at earliest before they see any change to this pattern. Keep boycotting, guys. Look where it got us. All constant sub CCV bleed. The stock plummeting from 3,000 to 2,200 yen. That kind of stuff. So it's it's doing benefits. It's not just like random stuff. It's, it's having benefits. It's having tangible benefits for for us as people who want to see change. Because if Nidhi Sanji sees that they keep hurting and hurting and hurting, my hope and the hope of everybody else is that change will actually happen. Let's hope it does. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.